someone else may have created it. Oh, and definitely. Uh, Cassio, what planet, do we know what planet the ray aliens come from? Are they from our own solar system or beyond? Uh, I don't know. We cannot reach them right now with the science we have, but um, I don't know. It doesn't really explain in the book. Um, so, but they, they, they observe us. So they've been here since the beginning of the creation, since they created us, and they, they observe and you know, the crop circles and all the, the pyramids. They used to, like it's in the Bible, they used to live with them. Um, as, um, yeah, the, uh, the Bible backs up everything that Rael says. Yeah, and, and uh, then he asked me to talk a bit about Noah's Ark, which um, we don't believe that there was a flood. We believe, uh, because if, there's, if it rains a lot, any kind of boat can still float. So, um, and only uh, Noah's Ark survived. So it had to be like explosions of some kind and uh, probably uh, like a disaster, like, um, some kind of nuclear or something happened that created huge waves and Noah survived because uh, actually it was a spacecraft um, floating above the, uh, the Earth and how he put all the animals in the Ark well, uh, thanks to science, they took the DNA of each species, male and female, and um, they kept everything in a, in a spaceship. And when the Earth was ready for them to come back and land, so that's what they did and create life again. Well, that's interesting that you said they just extracted the DNA. That would make it easier to store. I was suggesting that they perhaps put all these creatures in suspended animation and then teleported them from various parts of the world to that arc, which, as I said, could have been the equivalent of a submarine that could withstand the deluge. Uh, but I, I that don't would be more um, efficient to take the DNA. And that wouldn't require too much storage. You wouldn't have to worry about feeding the creatures or the creatures attacking each other aboard the arc. Yeah, that makes uh, things more simple. Like, um, I, I don't see Noah in a, uh, yeah, actually saying, well, you know, um, ants, you go here. Cockroaches go here, you know. Lions, you've got to be vegetarian. You've got to just drink cow milk. You know, it's, it's impossible. And even yeah. if Noah did prepare meat, the meat would have went bad. You know, so this makes perfect sense that it was DNA. You know, yeah. um, this is what I would call an advanced um, uh, adult Sunday school lesson. You know, because um, you really to understand all of this, um, and and you uh, look at the Bible. You've got to do your word studies. You've got to go in and, and do your Hebrew word studies. And when you get into all this, um, you, you begin to understand. And, you, and I've had people tell me many times that when you get into doing your word studies, the Bible, it just completely opens up to you, and it's different than what you thought it was before. You know, like um, a lot of people think it was Jonah and a whale, when really, one, the Bible doesn't even use the word whale. And, but no, it was a fish. fish. But, but we know that fish was just like a symbolism for this um, underwater spacecraft. That's yeah, they could have looked at that time. They were now? primitive. So they had to use their own words. So, you know, a submarine well, it was a big fish. Exactly, because, right. I mean, they, they couldn't call it a spaceship it. or, you know, exactly. Uh, Cassie, I wanted to ask if, the, if you know if the Raelians might have conducted similar ex genetic experiments on other planets, either in our solar system or beyond, or is the Earth of the only one they targeted? No, they created life uh, on all other planets. They did too. Other Earth-like, uh, humanoid life on other planets? Yeah, I mean, the universe is infinite, so of course there's definitely humans, there's probably spiders, there's, there's any kind of form of life, so uh, yeah, it says in the book, Intelligent Design, that they also create a life on uh, two other planets, um, not in our solar system. On, on just two other planets? Yeah. So out of the whole universe, they only selected three planets to conduct experiments on? Uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, well, hopefully if we don't destroy this planet, one day we will do the same and we'll go on another planet and create life and they might think we're God or something like that. That's certainly possible. I have some wild ideas. I can't wait till I get ready to, I mean, the planets I would love to build and the life, 
you know, I would I would love to to create have like um, the water to 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 actually have a glow to it. You know, sort of like if you were to break a glow stick open and have that liquid to pour out. And I would love when it would rain that it would be in colors, and and each raindrop would have the brightness of an LED light. <laughs> oh yeah, so my planets would be, I mean, they would be happening. Awesome places. Just use your imagination and. Well, perhaps yeah, those plants turn me loose out in the universe. Benny, those plants may already exist. We just don't know them, about them yet. Well, it's great. Yeah, um, I guess similar to um, what was the planet on um, on Avatar? They called it uh, that the Navi lived. Um, that was a very beautiful planet. Oh yes. You know, on, on Avatar. Hmm. But actually, I think they lived on the moon, if I'm not mistaken, or on a moon. Well, that's certainly possible. But uh, even in the early Flash Gordon serial, the first Flash Gordon serial, uh, he went to a planet where the one race was living in the clouds above the surface. So I think sci anything science fiction has created is certainly, again, within the realm of possibility considering the vastness of our universe and the time we're talking about. Uh, I was wondering about the ray aliens, if they've in any way tried to re help us prevent, say, a, a, a global nuclear war, such as by, we had a case of the Malmstrom Air Force Base back in 1967 where we have the latest report that 10 nuclear missiles apparently were deactivated by a uh, hovering UFO. Would the aliens have any way tried to help us prevent destroying ourselves? Uh, I think that there's a plan, but... Um we also have to deserve um, to to live, and we have to make this planet a non-violent uh, planet. And it's possible that um, I don't think they they don't intervene. And if we destroy the planet, they might recreate, um, start it all over again. Uh, but for us to deserve them to come, we have to become non-violent. Otherwise, there's no way. Uh, we can uh, they can give us their technology and we're going to use it for that thing so um. so this this case has come been, been in the news recently again about Malmstrom Air Force Base and my thought was that possibly they deactivated 10 nuclear missiles as uh, to show that they can uh, prevent us from destroying ourselves but you're saying they might just not intervene at all and let, leave us to our own devices so yeah that's what I think yeah. Uh, yeah. So we yeah, have to I, earn, I earn their trust and and uh, help in the future. Yeah, there's no point for them to come if we are a violent society because we're going to go against them. Uh, so um, and before, what's going to happen is that we either going to either going to destroy this planet or we're going to uh, go to this golden age everybody's talking about and uh, travel in space and create life but we with the technology we have um, and with the mentality we have we have technology of tomorrow and still primitive uh, mentality of yesterday killing each other so it's going to end at one point well, and, uh, I, so if destroy, I don't think they're going to help us they're just going to let us make our own choice. That's why we're here to uh, help humanity to become non-violent. So you don't but think only, any of only these... love is the... huh? So you don't think any of these cases where UFOs have been reported over uh, military bases were attempts to prevent us from destroying ourselves? That's not the I proper interpretation. So. I don't think so, but who am I to uh, say anything? I don't know. Well, I, I don't think so. I'd like to think they were looking after us if they created us, at least prevent us from uh, destroying ourselves utterly. I can see what they do. That's what, well, that's why they cited all the prophets. That's why they cited Rael on earth that is spreading a message of love. That's why they sent Buddha and Mohammed to help humanity. But we have, as, as children, we have to grow ourselves. So that's why we, have, we are responsible for it. We have four cool. minutes. Like um, we so we have to become wise. Do we have wise. any callers? We have uh, four minutes left on the show. Um, the phone lines are open, so if there's anybody that wants to call in, feel free. 
go yes, ahead. Whoever calls yes. would be our very first caller. Pardon me? If we get a caller, that would be our very first caller. Yeah, it would be our very first. Nobody ever calls in. A significant... Uh, we have listeners, but nobody calls in. A significant moment in the history of the show, Hypergalactic Enigmas. <laughs> so if you're listening, come on, call, and, you know, the, uh, oh, the phone right number... Oh. The phone number is 818-369-0313. Again, the number is, if you got your pen ready, it's 818 818- Three six nine zero three one three. We have three minutes. Uh, Cassio, um, if you want to tell us about um, the maybe the uh, the the Rael website or uh, tell us where people can go to get more Raelian information. Yeah, just go on the website Rael dot org, R A E L dot org, and uh, you'll get all the information you want. Okay. Will we see your phone Even, there, Cassio? Uh, Say it again. Is your photo online there at the website? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you at the website? Are you listed at the website? Uh, I am, uh, yes, actually I get the, um, I get the, I have the phone line on my phone. So yeah, if someone is calling um, the website, the number on the, on the website, I'll get the call. Okay. So that, again, that's Rael, R-A-E-L dot org for further information yeah. about the Ray aliens. Right. Okay. And, and then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, his book is free download too, right? The P- in PDF. Yeah. Yes. So uh, Rael's book is free to download for anyone who wants to check this out. It will cost you nothing. Is exactly. That correct? Okay, great. Yeah, and it's the message right from the Elohim. So he didn't write anything himself in the book. It's the message right from the Elohim that he just uh, put in the book. So you have all the, their knowledge about science and uh, meditation and relationships and happiness that comes right from them. So that's their teaching in the book. Okay, that's great. Well, again, I just want to point out my thesis that the universe is literally teeming with life, and I expect that every planet harbors an entire range of bioforms from lower to higher embodiments. And I'd like to uh, debate that with anyone out there who does, disagrees with me. If there are any takers on that. Whether it's okay, man, whether just bring up another life, or, or, just or mention, you know, just for those who are ahead. out there, I want to mention Elvira before we cut off. If any remember Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, with her movie Macabre, uh, she's now back. Started last week with her horror movies. Looks the same. Sounds great. So this is syndicated around the country. So in some areas where you're listening now, you can see her Saturday at midnight. How about that? I can't wait. I love Elvira. Um, well, Doctor, uh, would you like to go ahead and take us on out? Okay. Again, uh, Cassio, thanks for being on the show. Yes, Cassio, it was a high honor having you as a guest. And for our entire audience and everyone else, may the power of the cosmos be with you. Until next time. Yes. Yes. Yes.